Hello watchers and welcome back to the channel. Uh, today for this particular review I have uh, another Casio. Uh, now this uh, isn't a G-Shock uh, but it is uh, a, uh, a resin case watch. This is the uh, ProTrek Triple Sensor um, uh, model PRG270-1. Uh, now the, a very similar uh, current model uh, that I guess in some ways is superior, but and has a thicker case. Is the uh, P, uh, the model is PAG two forty dash one CR, and that would be I guess more of a s close spiritual successor to this uh, older uh, Pathfinder um, watch, which I've previously featured. Uh, now, you know, at first I, I was a little bit confused as to uh, what. You know why is this Pathfinder? Why is this ProTrek? Why this seems to be branded ProTrek uh, in some markets, uh, uh, and and this was Pathfinder from uh, Amazon that I got this from uh, you know a few years ago, and now it turns out that uh, it you know from all my understanding Pathfinder is a sub label of ProTrek in I guess in some times in history it seemed like. They had to use Pathfinder in the in North America or in the U.S., uh, whereas ProTrek uh, may have been uh, uh, the name they uh, more readily use el uh, elsewhere in the world. Uh, right now, it does seem like they do sell uh, ProTrek uh, inside the U.S., so it doesn't seem like there's a there's a copyright issue with the name now, uh, and they uh, they exist side by side. You have watches uh, that are ProTrek on the official. Casio USA ProTrek site, uh, site. Uh, and in, in there as well you have watches with the Pathfinder name. So I, I think they, they exist side by side inside the ProTrek, but for people who, who know uh, about Casio more than I do, I don't really know that much, uh, please correct me if I'm wrong. Okay, so this watch is, uh, as mentioned already, is the, the triple sensor watch and it's really uh, and they call it multifunction, and boy, is it multifunction! It just got so many things that it does. Um, the, the MSR, the US MSRP is 180 uh, US, and as far as I gather, this model is a 2013 model, um, whereas the the, the uh, current model, which is a Pathfinder, uh, the PAG 240, uh, is uh, I think a 2010 model. So this is a more uh, I guess it's got a few more years advantage in terms of technological uh, development and I'll go into the differences there. Uh, so this is a black resin case or predominantly black uh, along with a black uh, non-rotating uh, compass directional bezel uh, and if you look at the, the inside of the uh, the bezel there there is a altitude uh, change or, or a barometer change markings there. Uh, it's got a adjust and a mode indicator there uh, it's got it does say it's water resistant 10 bar down the bottom uh, and then on the inner inner side there there's a graduated markings and that's mainly used for the compass mode uh, this is 52 millimeters across from from this side to this side right from, from the tip of the button to the tip of the sensor uh, knob there uh, it is uh, pleasingly only 14 millimeters thick which is quite a different thing uh, to that previous Pathfinder which is more 18 millimeters thick so a lot more uh, streamlined they've managed to make the electronics thinner for this watch uh, it is a, a the, the, the case back is held together by uh, let's pull this apart uh, as you can see there's screws it is not a screw in uh, case back uh, it's rated at 100 meters water resistant, so suitable for swimming but not diving is what they say. Um, okay, so you can see that, that clearly that, that uh, plain uh, grey LCD dial, uh, which is a slightly superior in visibility, I think, to this one. The, the contrast is just higher on the newer model, but that may be because this is uh, EL, electroluminescence lighting, whereas this is uh, more an LED backlight. That may be part of it, but I don't really know for sure. Um, so it is a tough solar, and you can already see a uh, tough solar uh, mark um, somewhere on the watch. There you go, under the ProTrack, you can see tough solar. 
uh, triple sensor quartz multifunction. It is Casio module 3415 if you're interested to look up the, uh, the manual for this. Um, so what does it feature? It features uh, these uh, sensor buttons on the side and the sensors are a direction sensor which gives you the compass, a pressure sensor which gives you a barometer and altimeter, uh, and a thermometer, a temperature sensor. Um, so to activate it, so I'll, I'll cover the altimeter first. So the altimeter, uh, very interestingly, they've claimed that they can measure uh, in a minus 700 meters to 10,000 meters in one meter increments. Uh, it does take relative readings. It does take a log memory. Uh, and in, in contrast to the previous one, uh, it does have memory as well, the previous models. But the previous models do five meter increments, which is more, I think, realistic. Uh, it's really interesting. They, they think they've refined the sensor to be able to do one meter. Uh, and I'd be interested to hear anybody who uses this for you know, tracking mountaineering if they, they uh, I guess, believe that it is that accurate. Uh, now, the barometer activated by this center button here. Uh, is again hectopascals. Uh, this one probably is less controversial in accuracy. Uh, 260 to 1100 hectopascal range. Uh, it does have differential graphs uh, and it does have a change indicator at the side here. Uh, right now I haven't taken any historical readings so you can see there's a marking there at zero. Uh, so there's no change relative to the most recent meet, uh, reading but it, it will go up or down depending on your historical readings. Um, now the thermometer is 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 uh, uh, displayed there at the the bottom marking. So you know this is reading thirty one point one degrees, uh, and the range is minus sixty to sixty Celsius uh, degrees Celsius um, or centigrade. Um, you can change that to Fahrenheit if you prefer. All right, digital compass activated by this. Now this doesn't have the uh, dual LCD of the uh, Pathfinder models. It does use uh, an indicator on the periphery of the display. So if I hold this to where I'm facing, yes, it is south southwest, and north is, you know, as I previously indicated, roughly to my back right, indicated by that three uh, black dark markings there. And you know, again, as you rotate it, it will show you a bearing, and you can take bearing memories um, uh, for for mountaineering or trekking. Uh, I won't go into those details because I, I, I've uh, uh, not, uh, I guess, hasn't had the opportunity to use any of those features. Okay, what else does it have? It has so much, it's just... Okay, so this is the basic time, uh, Tuesday, uh, the date 14th, uh, seconds at the bottom there. Uh, and if you sit, put the press the set button, it changes to the, the uh, month and date up the top there. And then gives you a, a historical graph, I think that's the barometer graph there. All right, basic time. The next thing along is actually sunrise, sunset. So um, this uh, has a home city function. Now this doesn't have my city in it. Uh, Perth is not in it. So I've had to set it to a time zone of a similar, uh, no, another city with the same time zone. And I've put it as Singapore. Now Singapore has a very different latitude to Perth, uh, but it does allow you to adjust your latitude. So this, uh, is the sunrise and sunset time based on the adjusted latitude in the time zone. Interestingly though, this isn't correct. You know, I, I know what the Bureau of Meteorology says the sunrise and sunset time are, and this, this is off by, uh, you know, I think uh, nearly half an hour on both of those counts. Uh, and I'm not sure why that is. Maybe their, their database isn't doesn't really cover all that, uh, but I guess that's a slight disappointment uh, why it doesn't work. Uh, but it, and I think if your home city is in it and you select it, I suspect that will give you the right times. Okay, so sunrise, sunset. Uh, this is a recall memory mode. If you've done historical recordings, you can bring it up here. Uh, I, I won't go into that because I haven't done any. Um, stopwatch, and uh, this is a one-tenth second stopwatch. Uh, you can see it counts in tenths of a second, not hundreds of a second. So if you need that accuracy, this doesn't have it, but it is a thousand hour stopwatch. You know, I, I've never ever timed a thousand hours, but that, that number up the top there will go right up to 999 for the hours. 
Next mode, uh, countdown timer, and this will go down from 24 up to 24 hours if you want that. Four daily alarms with a snooze function. And then lastly, also a world time function. So that's a coordinated universal time now. Uh, so Perth is plus eight, so you can see it's eight hours ahead of UTC, uh, but you can go ahead and you know, swap through various cities and it does have uh, 48 cities uh, with you know, over 30 different time zones that you can switch through. Okay, and that, that's, that's an amazing number of modes. Uh, this is Tough Solar. Uh, now, Tough Solar, as I, I understand it, means that it, it, it's good enough to support the tough functions, you know, the multi-sensor functions of the watch. I don't know whether Tough Solar really means anything else, uh, the, whether the, the solar uh, device or electronics is tougher than usual. I, I think as far as the Casio site says, it seems to be it supports the energy demanding functions of some of the, the features of this watch. Um, so that, that's a great upgrade from, from the, the previous model, which wasn't a solar watch. So I really, it makes me quite tempted to, to, to get this actually. Um, okay, uh, now uh, the solar is nine months, uh, uh, I, I guess, capacity uh, duration on full charge. And it does have a basic battery indicator down the bottom you can see there's an H there, uh, so that, that goes from H to from high to M medium to L low, and if it's low, uh, I think particularly if critically low, it'll, it'll flash up the, the, that display there as low. Um, but you know, I think if you're using this daily or leaving it in a bright room, you, you shouldn't ever uh, approach low. Uh, so there you go, that, that amazing degree of functions. Uh, the strap is the, the basic, uh, you know, resin uh, strap that comes with these uh, outdoor watches. Nothing too special, but it is comfortable. Uh, now, I want to mention uh, the differences between this and the uh, PAG models, the Pathfinder models, the current models. The Pathfinder does have duplex LCD. So by that, I mean, uh, if you do look at the compass mode, you can see there's a dual layer on the LCD that it overlays the existing uh, darker LCD. This doesn't. Uh, you've already seen the compass mode. It doesn't have that dual layer. Uh, the Pathfinder does have electroluminescence backlighting, so EL lighting. I'll see if I can demonstrate some of that. So you can see it's an even light through the back there, whereas this is more of a uh, LED backlight. So it's not uh, even. It's on one side. You know, it's a nice color, it definitely functions, but it's definitely not as beautiful as the EL light you get on this. And this will be brighter in the dark as well. Um, the, the Pathfinder has a hundredth of a second stopwatch. This is a tenth of a second. And the Pathfinder has a rotating bezel. If you feel that that's an important function, this bezel does not rotate. What this does have better, uh, being three years newer than the current model, Pathfinder is that it has a better altimeter resolution, one meter as opposed to five meter. This has a world time, whereas the Pathfinder model does not. Uh, this has a, uh, a longer stopwatch duration. The Pathfinder has 24 hours. This has a thousand hours if you need that. And the Pathfinder has uh, less battery capacity. So the Pathfinder is rated at six months. This is rated at nine months. So, you know, some ways this is superior. It is a thinner watch, uh, whereas the Pathfinder is more like 18 millimeters. Um, very similar diameter, uh, but thinner. So, you know, some superiority, some features may be weaker. Uh, what I like about this, you know, it is a tough watch. Uh, you know, it's got that resin case, even though it's not G-Shock, it does not have uh, shock protection capability, but it is tough. It is solar, which I really you know like so much that they've made this solar. Uh, it it you know really now takes the trophy for the watch with the most number of features that are featured on the channel. It has so much that they have packed into here, along with the triple sensor, uh, and it still, despite that, has the Casio homology. You know readily how to uh, change the mode, how to set the watch, how to you know, operate many of the functions, the alarm stopwatch is the same as any other Casio really. Um, what I think are the slight weaknesses for this, 
uh, it, it it doesn't have the uh, EL lighting that is so much better on the the Pathfinder. I think if they put that in, this would be just you know I think really definitely be a, a better uh, watch in almost every way. Uh, and and lastly, uh, it has forty eight cities. Probably that covers most of uh, you know the English speaking population. Maybe. Uh, it doesn't have my city. Uh, now that normally wouldn't be a big deal for world time, but it does affect the sunrise sunset function. That that is not quite accurate on this watch. So you know some just minor gripes. Overall, you know I, I really, really like this. You know it's very tempting uh, to get uh, this as an upgrade. So uh, I have to say I forgot to mention at the start of the video, which I should have. Thank you very much again to the people at Celine Watches uh, in Watertown, uh, Perth, uh, that brand outlet shopping centre uh, and Celine Jewel is, an, you know, they have a great little selection of jewellery and watches. Uh, pop by if you happen to go to Watertown in Perth uh, and take a look. Uh, so thank you again uh, for the uh, provision of the watch uh, and guys, thank you for watching. Um, give us uh, you know, a like, let me know what you think of uh, Pathfinders and Protrex, whether you use them, whether you find the features uh, helpful, and as always, I will see you next time.